Okay, this video is about the aircraft electrical system trainer that we all have in our campus. Uh, along with the simulator, you should have three documents. The first one is the operations manual, how to function the simulator. The second one is your study guide. That's useful if you want to look up any information about the circuits uh, and the components involved. And the last one you have, or you should have, is the, uh, the supplement document. This is really useful if you want to give your students a quiz because it has many questions. Um, with the answer key so you could ask them any questions you want about the, the simulator after they are done if you have not used the simulator for a long time and you did not turn it on begin by removing uh, both panels of course making sure the electricity is completely off uh, and uh, just inspect uh, the wiring and the cables make sure everything is connected uh, as it should be nothing is loose also inspect the belt uh, between the motor uh, and the generator and you can check the same on the right side so just make sure it's tight enough make sure it's uh, it's not loose in this case uh, I don't have the 24 volt battery that you should be using it should be 24 volts I don't have that so I'm going to function my simulator using this which is basically a converter it will convert the AC to DC and give me the necessary uh, voltage that I need okay uh, before you start make sure all the switches on the control panel are in the off position Make sure all the circuit breakers are pulled out from their position. Also, you want to make sure the switches in the back of the simulator are in the off position. So you have two here. And then you have the instructor panel here. All mine are up right now, so those need to be turned off. Also, inspect the simulator from uh, below at the back, again, for the wiring. In this case, the access door for me doesn't close because I have the converter cables going into the simulator uh, from behind. So once you've checked everything and you're certain there is nothing loose or anything that needs attention, uh, you can go ahead with the uh, start and function of the, of the simulator, which I will explain in the video now. The process of turning the simulator on is first by turning on the power from the wall socket. Next you want to flip up all these switches and the instructor panel located at the back of the circuit, uh, the simulator, sorry. And you want to do the same thing here for the electrical power. And then you go to the front of the simulator. Before starting the master switch, you want to push in the battery uh, switch here on the circuit uh, breaker board. And then you can go ahead and put the master power up and this uh, this red light uh, along with the two orange lights should illuminate to indicate that the simulator has now started. Uh, next thing we need to do is start both engines left and right side so we need to engage the starter motor one on the right side one on the left side. To do that you need to uh, use this toggle here known as the starter selector so I can't engage the starter until I've engaged first the selector here. So pull this toggle up towards you and then move it to the right to engage starter number one on the right side. Hold this down for about three seconds uh, so that the uh, engine has enough uh, power to, to start. You need to repeat the same for the left side. So pull it up, take it to the left, same thing. And now you can go ahead and return this to its middle position. Uh, that's step number one. Step number two now we need to uh, ask the generators to, to start now that our engines are on. So to get the generators to, to work we need to push in three things on the circuit breaker panel. The first one is the essential bus that has to function as well as generator number two and generator number one. Once you've pushed those three in you can go ahead and flip this switch up for generator one. You'll notice the orange light disappears to indicate it's on. Do the same thing for generator two. Another way of uh, checking that these are functioning correctly is that you will notice the reading on the voltmeter here for generator one and two will have a reading now and that reading should be 28 volts. And that's correct for both of them. That indicates the generators are on and they're working uh, fine. Step number three would be the inverters which are these here of course in the aircraft we need inverters to convert from AC to DC 
um, passengers are using the screens in front of them and the USB outlets etc so in order to start the inverters you need to push in inverter number one and inverter number two on the circuit uh, uh, here which is the circuit breaker so in one and two push in next you need to flip this and this switch up which indicates they are now functioning in my simulator the green lights which should illuminate don't uh, so in this case I think the fault is because I'm not using a battery but your simulator should illuminate to show you that the inverters are now on there is no other functionality to this uh, component the inver inverters the idea is just to show you that we functioned the inverters in the correct uh, in the correct way but there's nothing more to them now we can go ahead and start some of the components we have here like the landing gear and the lights let's start with the landing gear so the landing gear motor is located here this will function the landing gear up and down and the switch is actually here on this on the uh, control panel before we use this we have to again we have to push in the circuit breaker related to the landing gear so if you look closely you can see landing gear is right there so I'll push that in and now I can engage the landing gear motor the landing gear has now functioned I can turn it off and on don't let it run for more than 20 seconds so it doesn't get overheated or burned out next we can go ahead and turn on the navigation lights which are these ones and that one so again we have to find the navigation lights on the circuit breaker which is this one nav lights and then go to the control panel and turn nav lights on so now I have my navigation lights functioning as they should next I'm going to go ahead and turn on the internal lights which is inside of the aircraft itself so we're going to look for internal lights written here as int lights and then you can go ahead and flip the switch on the control panel and now you can see I have the cabin light as well as the reading light for the passengers on the pilot or the, the cockpit light should also be on in this case my bulb needs to be changed um, so that should illuminate you also have uh, a switch or a toggle here that you can move which turns it into a red light by putting a screen in front of the bulb and to turn these off you'll have to repeat the steps backwards so flipping the switch down turning off the nav lights by switching it down and then pushing in the, uh, or pulling out I should say the necessary circuit breaker okay so those are the few steps for the navigation light the landing gear and then uh, internal lights those three components we just uh, used are all related to generator number one so they all used the load from generator number one they did not take anything from generator number two so each generator is responsible for a different part uh, or different components let's say electrical components on the aircraft so now we're going to go on to the loads on generator number two the first component we'll use for generator number two will be the uh, landing light. So again, you can go ahead and find ldg.light here and then press it, oh sorry, I should say flip it on the uh, control panel, which is here, landing light on. Once we're done with this, we can now go ahead and start the instrumentation or the gauges that we have so the instrumentation you'll need to start them by pushing in instrumentation circuit breaker INST instrumentation and go ahead and flip the switch here which is instrumentation power on and you'll automatically notice the fuel gauge is starting to give me a reading so the fuel now is assumed to be a half of a tank the, the sensor for the fuel gauge is actually located here on the left side and you can adjust the fuel level by moving this toggle here this uh, piece of plastic here up and down and that will adjust the fuel accordingly so for example if I move this up my fuel increases to almost full if I move it down then of course we're going to see the opposite happen you can see it's still moving so that's what's necessary to engage uh, these instruments these instrumentation the next thing we're going to move on to now 
is the avionics blower and the avionics blower and the cabin as well the blower for the cabin uh, for the passengers in this case we need to push in the auxiliary bus 1 and auxiliary bus 2 on the circuit breaker and we can go ahead and start with the avionics blower which is this one and you can see it's spinning this is obviously necessary to keep the electric components cool I'll turn that off now and now we need to turn the blower on and the blower can be found here in the cabin air switch and now you can see that it's spinning from the inside this should have a cover on your simulator for health and safety reasons so those are the loads on um, generator number two uh, the next thing to speak about is nothing to do with the generators because it will function without them uh, is the stall uh, sensor we have here so we have a warning system this on the right side is the sensor itself and that's the alarm so if the aircraft is in a stall of course the alarm will go off and that's that's using this piece of metal here so if I push this piece of metal up I touch it the alarm um, will start to warn the pilot that there is a stall it's very loud so this little flap you see here will be uh, on the outside of the aircraft and of, of course if the airplane uh, is in a stall position it will move up and that's what causes the alarm to function so that's the uh, stall warning indicator there finally the shutdown procedure you begin by ensuring everything is switched off on the control panel apart from the generator and inverter so we need to make sure the lights the fan everything is off on the left and the right side then we go ahead and we can flip the inverters off and then we do the same for the generators once all of these have been turned off, you can go ahead and flip the master switch. The entire system is shut down, including the engines at the bottom in the simulator. Uh, you need to also pull out all the circuit breakers again before starting the system. So make sure all of them are taken out. You'll need to repeat the same for the back of the simulator and making sure that all of the switches are in the off position. And once you've completed turning all of the switches off, go ahead and turn it off from the main power. And that's the end of the simulator um, tutorial. If you have any questions, please uh, let me know. If you don't have the documents as well, I can uh, try my best to photocopy or scan what I, I can and send them to you. Um, thank you.